welcome to another episode of The World Outside My Window. Let's see what the weirdos are doing, where you can see what they're doing. I don't know. I don't know why they're doing that. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, and welcome to another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. And today on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, I'm going to revisit the homemade tape recorder. Now, you may remember in the previous video, it didn't work all that well. Well, it did work sort of well, but it didn't work as well as it could have done. For starters, the bias was way too low. I mean, when I measured the bias on a proper tape recorder, it was around 45 volts. And although I don't think we're going to need that much bias, I think something around 30 volts will work pretty well. So, I went scouring the internet, looking for some schematics to inspire me. So this is the first thing I was going to try. It looks pretty simple, just need a couple of op amps and a few passives and done. But then I realised, these are not op amps. Well, this lower one probably is, but this upper one definitely is not. I mean, it looks like an op amp, it's got a triangular shape, and it's got something that looks like an inverting input and a non-inverting input. But that's a special kind of oscillator chip. And to get one of those, I would have to shell out about £50. Pounds. So, yeah, I'm not going that way. So, obviously, that one's out of the question. So I did a little more scouring of the internet and found some more circuits. And I really like this one. It uses the array set itself as the bias coil. Unfortunately, no matter what I did, I just could not get this circuit to oscillate, so that was a no-go. So here's another circuit I found. Here's another circuit I found. I hate the way my voice does that, but anyway, like that first circuit I showed, it uses the array set as the bias coil, which is a feature I really like. That means I'm not going to have to try and find a suitable oscillator coil because, well, we've got one there already. Doesn't look too complicated. I should be able to build this thing up and see if it works. The only thing I didn't have was the transistors that the original schematics specified. So I'm going to use a BD-140 and a BD-139. Hopefully they'll do something. And finally, this circuit here. Now, this one does require a separate bias oscillator coil. So if that other circuit doesn't work, I'll have to try and make this one work and try to make a good bias oscillator coil. I hope it won't come to that, but there is one thing that I really, really do like about this circuit, and that is, if you look here, I've got a, um, oh, what's it called, an inductor and a capacitor in parallel, and what that's doing is it's stopping the bias oscillator getting into the audio source, so as long as this is tuned to whatever frequency the bias oscillator is running at, that'll block all of that getting into the audio source, and it'll stop the bias oscillator getting loaded down by the audio source as well. So, I might actually try this idea and see if it works. I also had a look at the schematic for the Akai reel-to-reel -reel that I have, see how they did it. So, this thing here that I've outlined in red, this is the bias oscillator. And if you look how they've mixed the bias and the signal, you see, they, see they've used variable capacitors. Um, this connector goes to the head. They've used variable capacitors to connect the bias to the head. And if you look right here, even they've had that idea of using a coil and a capacitor to connect the audio to the head. So, yep, yeah, um, that's what I'm going to go with. Okay, I built the circuit up, and let's see if it works. Now, pay no attention to anything on this side of the breadboard, that's nothing to do with it. It's this little gadget right here and I've got that wired up to our erase head and I've also got the scope connected to our erase head I don't know why I say our erase head but you know the erase head let's just move that in a little bit closer and get a bit of a zoom up on that now I'm gonna power it from this 9 volt battery to start with be nice and safe 9 volt battery with a little switch connected to it so that way I'm not so likely to blow something up should this not work. But anyway, I've 
got everything set up and ready, so let's just give it a quick power on, see if anything happens. Oh, yeah, yeah look at that. Well, it's definitely working. We're getting about 268 kilohertz, though, that's rather high. And 36 volts into our rate hit. So, that definitely works. Frequency's rather high, though. Well, turns out there was a problem with the circuit. A problem named Clement Sagas. Yes, I forgot how many zeros a 10 nanofarad and a 100 nanofarad has. So instead of putting a 100 nanofarad here, I put a 10 nanofarad. And instead of a 10 nanofarad here, I put a 1 nanofarad. So no wonder the frequency was way too high. What if I do it now? See, it's much more reasonable. We're getting 106 kilohertz. Voltage is a little less, so at only 31.6 this time. Now, I just want to put an extra 100 nanofarads in between the collector and base of the NPN transistor. Let's just get the battery out of the way. Hope it doesn't short out on anything. Uh, it'd be easier to put it in this way around. See, I'm running out of holes. I'm rapidly running out of holes on my breadboard here. I had to put those two capacitors in the same hole. But they got nice thin legs, so I go in there. So let's see what we get now. Oh yeah! Look at that! 45 volts! 100 kilohertz! That's perfect! Now all we need to do is find some way to connect our record head and connect the audio signal. Now I want to do passive mixing because of the voltages involved. You know, there's no way an op amp is going to be able to do that, so this is what I've come up with. So this is from my bias oscillator. It goes into a 330 picofarad capacitor and a 47k variable resistor. So we can set the bias level. Now, this capacitor in circuits I've seen goes anything from 100 picofarad to 1 nanofarad, so I just decided to settle on 330 ping, 330 picofarads and see how well that works. And this here is called the bias trap, apparently. And it indeed does what I think it did. Stops the bias from getting into the audio line. So I went digging around in my parts bin. I found a 4.7 millihenry coil. And using an online calculator, I found the right capacitor, so this will filter out the 100 kilohertz bias that I have. But what I want to do is I'm going to tune the bias trap so it's on the exact frequency that the bias is. So what I decided to do is put a 500 picofarad capacitor here, and then put that in parallel with a 150 picofarad variable capacitor. Okay, let's see if this works. I've added the capacitor and the variable resistor to connect the record slash playback head to the circuit. I'm going to set this about halfway. Okay, smoke test. Ah, right, let's see if we can adjust our bias here. Yeah, that's working. We've got about 35 volts, and we can take that and go down to about 6 volts. So I'm going to put that on about 30 volts. I know it's shifting up and down, but there's a bit of the 50 hertz crap that it's picking up. Anyway, what I want to do now is I want to make sure that our bias trap, I'm just going to call it a filter because that's basically what it is, I want to make sure that this filter is tuned to the same frequency that the bias is, which at the moment is pretty much dead on 100 kilohertz. So, if I short this end of the bias trap to ground, and the bias level doesn't shift, well now it's tuned properly. Um, let's just try to find a ground line here. Alright, let's put that in there. Hopefully then nothing is shorting out anything else. Ah, now it did go up just a little bit. So it did shift a little bit. So we're on 30.4 volts right now with it disconnected. 
Let's put that back in. It's gone up to 32 volts. So just to tune this until we get that back where it should be. Almost there. Okay, 30.4 volts. Okay, maybe just go up just a little bit more. Trouble is when you touch this, it throws the capacitance off a little bit. Okay, maybe just a smidge more. Maybe a bigger smidge. Okay, that's overdone it. Don't think I'm going to get this absolutely 100% dead on. Alright, so 30.4 volts. When I pull this out, that should not change. Yep. Absolutely perfect. Of course, the question on everybody's mind is, does it record? Well, that's what we're about to find out. So I've connected my microphone preamp. So, signal wire is going into a bias trap or a filter or whatever you want to call it. Ground is going to the circuit's ground. Got my microphone here. Let's make a recording and see if it does anything. Okay, leader has gone by. Let's see if this is making a recording. Hopefully it is. I have absolutely no idea how loud it's going to record. That is, if it is even making a recording. So, yeah, I kind of just don't know what to say right now, so we'll just rewind this and play it back. Well, it definitely made a recording, that's for sure. But it's very loud and very mid-rangey. Okay, leader has gone by. Let's see if this is making a recording. Hopefully it is. I have absolutely no idea how loud it's going to record. That is, if it is even making a recording. So, yeah, I kind of just don't know what to say right now, so we'll just rewind this and play it back. I think the reason why it's sounding so distorted is because it just recorded extremely loudly. I'm going to go over to my other tape deck here. And let's just see what the meters have to say. Of course, it would help if I had the right side in. I'm going to have to fix that fast forward button. Oh, yeah, that is pegging the meters there. So, no wonder it's distorted. Okay, so there's one problem. For... Okay, so there's one problem to fix. And I think the reason why it's sounding so mid rangey, even more mid rangey than this thing normally is. I think it's the inductance of the head combined with the capacitance of the filter here. I think that's creating another tuned circuit, this time in the audio bandwidth. So I'm going to have to figure out a way around that as well. Okay, well, I'm having to do a take two here because I don't know what happened, but I started the camera recording and when I was about to start this thing recording, it was already going. So I don't know what happened there. When I stopped the camera, the camera just started recording a new file, so I don't know what happened there. So anyway, my solution for the loudness problem, I've just put a couple of resistors between the microphone preamp and our filter here, so it should record at a much more reasonable level. So, we'll start it recording, and I'm talking at a normal sort of volume level into the microphone while this is recording on this rather funky looking cassette that looks like it's a, looks like it's got a fence on it and anyway we'll see how this goes or rather we'll hear how this goes so um let's give this a listen and I'm talking at a normal sort of volume level into the microphone while this is recording on this rather funky looking cassette that looks like it's looks like it's got a fence on it and anyway we'll see how this goes or rather we'll hear how this goes so um let's give this a listen as you can hear it sounds pretty good Anyway, I just want to um, 
increase the resistance here because I think the signal is still a little bit too hot so I'm just going to go and do that and see how well that works. Okay so as promised or maybe not promised because I made this video over the period of a few days and I can't remember what I already said but here is the full schematic of the recording circuit. I've also taken a few measurements of the arrays head and the record play head, so if you want to look at those you can. So anyway, I'll just go through a brief description of the circuit, explain a few things. So over here we've got our oscillator, which uses the arrays head as the bias coil. And then we've got our record play head here. And the reason why I've drawn two coils on it is because it's a stereo head, but I've connected both of the channels in parallel, so it's acting as a mono head. And these measurements here were just from one channel of the head before I connected them both together. Well, um, these measurements here, anyway. So to connect our bias oscillator to the record play head, there is a 330 picofarad capacitor and a 20, 20 kilo ohm variable resistor so we can adjust the bias level. I've got it biased right now to about 30 volts even though the array set is getting about 80 volts and to connect our audio to the record play head comes in here goes through these two resistors to lower the signal just a little bit so it doesn't overdrive and saturate then it goes through this ingenious little filter here called a bias trap. The bias can get over here but it cannot get through so it can get all the way here but it does not get out here so the bias does not go into our audio source and it does not get loaded down by the audio source yet our audio can go through that completely pretty much unmolested and get to the head now you might be asking where is the recording EQ well that's the thing this circuit doesn't have any yet it sounds pretty good because it's actually being recorded on this tape right now. Oh yeah, I forgot to I forgot to say I forgot to put this valve in the schematic because as you know valves make everything sound better. No, it's not even connected, but yeah. I don't know how it sounds so good without any recording equalization. But there you go. So, this is the circuit. Um, this LED isn't actually part of the circuit. I just put that in there to so I know if current's flowing because my connections on my power supply are a little bit blur. So sometimes I'll turn it on and uh, there's no power. So that LED tells me if power's flowing. And as you can probably see right now, it's on. So yeah, we are getting power from the power supply into it. Anyway, my train of thought is kind of, um, well, it's already derailed and fallen down the embankment and everybody else has died, so I'm going to leave you with some music that this thing recorded, and also I'm going to turn the fan back up because it's like, well, according to my um, thermometer, no, not thermometer, um, begins with TH, you know, that thing that shows you temperature and you can adjust it, thermostat, that's the word. According to my thermostat, it's about 32.5 in here, which is, I don't know, maybe over 100 Fahrenheit. So, I'm going to stop now before I either melt or burst into flames, whichever comes first, and leave you with some music that this recorded. So, take it away, tape recorder.